Hi everyone, in this episode of the Horus Heresy Army Painting series we're going to take a look at a nice, simple, effective recipe for the Ninth Legion, the Blood Angels, that will give us that nice 30k vibe that mean we can get that army on the table quick as possible. And I thought I'd use this amazing bit of artwork by Adrian Smith just to get you good and fired up. To start with, over a Chaos Black Primer I'm using Tamiya Flat White to do my pre-shade with. And I've thinned this about six drops of thinner to paint, and I'm using Tamiya X20A Thinner. Uh, this is the acrylic version of the paint. And in our recent uh, pre-shade video, I talk a little bit more in detail about why I use this paint and the actual technique we're using here. But as you can see, we're creating areas of light and dark on the model. Just using thin layers of white over black, so therefore, as we build it up, we'll get different tones, so we work through from very dark grey through grey to pure white. Red is a colour that particularly benefits from a nice bright pre-shade like this. So take your time, pick your light source and keep it consistent. For the red, I've picked a colour by Vallejo Model Air called Fire Red. I've used this paint for years and years and years. Uh, and I think it's really close to, in my opinion, that old uh, Blood Angels red that we used to see. So it's it's got a little bit of that sort of orange to it, but not too much. And as it goes on and we build up the layers, we'll get a smoother coat and a truer version of the colour. I've barely had to thin my pot of the, the fire red. Maybe one or two drops of thinner to five drops of paint, something like that but you might find that your bottle varies. And that's the case with many paints. Just start 50-50 thinning and work from there. So you can see already, even with this patchy uh, coat that's going on initially, maybe two or three coats in now, the pre-shade that we've done beneath is really starting to show through, giving us nice area of highlight, nice area of shadow. I'm actually focusing more on the mid-tone and the highlights with this red. And that's because I'm going to go into the shadows with corn red. This is the normal uh, base corn red and I've had to thin it maybe just over one drop of thinner to each drop of paint. And here I'm just aiming for all the areas of shadow and I also don't mind if I get a little bit of overspray in that mid-tone area. It will just create another interesting tone of red. But we want to put this into the shadows because as you can see where the red has gone over the black it's really desaturated it. It's not necessarily a dark red, it's just this horrible, dirty, muddy colour. You can see in this uh, image here, the fire red is more or less dry, and it's got that slight orange hint to it that I really like. I've nearly run out of it, actually. It's one of the first paints I bought when I got back in the hobby. It's nearly all gone. Uh, I've put the number down as well, because I'm not entirely sure if Vallejo still call it fire red. Now we have the whole model, three or four coats of Vallejo polyurethane gloss varnish through the airbrush. About three to one thinner to varnish and 25 psi. Over the glossy model, I'm gonna do some pin washing to bring some definition into the model. So to separate out the different sections of the model. And I was trying with raw umber. I thought that would be enough. This is Winsor & Newton Artist Oil Color raw umber. But I don't actually think it's gonna end up quite dark enough on this model. So I've wandered off and I'm going to get some lamp black and I'm going to mix that in too. You could always use uh, complementary colours, you could look at your colour theory and maybe you could use a green or a blue. Uh, in my opinion at this scale and for army painting I don't think we need to get too clever with things. This colour here I've got here provides enough definition and enough contrast. So I've thinned it right down with Sansa or Thinner and now I'm just going to work around all the panel lines, all the recesses. If you want to know more about this technique, check out our video on recess washing. Whilst the model's glossy and the oil is drying, I also applied the decals at this stage. So here the model is 24 hours later. I've applied the decals overnight, left it all to, to dry. If you want to check out our decals video, we go into detail on that. And I've given the whole model a couple of coats of three to one matte to gloss mix of varnish to create a satin coat. For the silver areas on the model, 
I'm going to base coat them using Scale 75 Black Metal. It's got a nice blue hint to it, which works well with the red. And then I'm going to highlight that silver using Games Workshop Graynite Steel for exactly the same reasons. Sorry about the focusing on this video, guys. I've just bought a new camera. Just get into grips with it. For the gold areas, I'm base coating them in Scale 75 Decayed Metal, which I'm sure you probably could have guessed if you've watched any of these other videos. I decided to leave the trims on the shoulder pads red. I like that look. I know the Blood Angels are meant to be all blingy and everything, but I figured this chap had enough on him with his chest and stuff here as well. Also, because I've used the resin helmet, I don't need to do eye lenses. If I had done, I'd have probably gone for green and used the same recipe as I did in the Emperor's Children video. Now to highlight the gold, I've used Vallejo Metal Colour Series Gold. It's a really nice pale gold and I had a look at a few different versions of artwork of the Blood Angels before I settled on this. That little blood drop on his chest as well, I would probably have painted that like a gem as well using the green recipe, but it's going to be hidden behind the bolter on this guy, so no need to bother. Because it's a 30k model, we want to put plenty of weathering and battle damage on him. And often I would use a dark brown colour like Rhinox Hide or Burnt Umber or something, but on the red, I think dark grey works particularly nicely. So for this I've used Vallejo model colour dark grey, but you could use something like Games Workshop, um, Skaven Blight Dinge, or, um, the old Charidon Granite colours, any sort of dark grey colour will work nicely. And I sponged it on and then added a few extra areas with my brush. And the final bit of chipping, I've taken a silver colour, in this case GW Lead Belcher, I'm just gently touching a few of the edges where I think the chips are going to be the freshest and they're revealing that metal. Now we want to add some dirty streaks on there and uh, a bit more dirt and grime in those recesses too. So I've taken a Winsor & Newton Artisaur colour Burnt Umber and I'm going to pull a couple of streaks down. We've done a whole video dedicated to this. I'll link that up in the corner. You can see we just start with a neat oil, shape the streak initially, and then using a clean brush with some Sansador thinner on it, we start to pull the streak down and shape it a bit more. And then I make a wash up with a burnt umber and just pin wash around those areas that I think would attract the most dirt and grime. So certainly lower down the model and things like your shoulder pads as well. And I'll also wash this all over the connective rubber parts. Uh, I've started doing that recently. I really like the effect it gives you. You'll notice I just base coated them black and I'm just giving them the wash of this burnt umber and that's all I do. I think it looks fantastic. I'm also going to wash it over the metals as well. It's always nice when you find something that you'll add to your army painting sort of regime, uh, especially when it saves a little bit of time and looks still looks really good. Once that oil's all dry, I've just popped him on a simple base and we can see how he looks all together. And this is the point at which I think to myself, hmm, maybe I'll do a Blood Angels project instead. And my Dark Angels army continues to sit on the shelf and not get any bigger. So just like the other recipes in this army painting series, we focused on the important areas of the model. And for Space Marines, that's nearly always going to be the armor color and then a bit of battle damage and whatnot on the armor. Pretty much everything else on there is simply to complement that armour. You can see with the lovely decals that were provided with by Forge World for the Heresy models, some simple one or two paint colour recipes for the armour, you really are going to be able to get a Legion painted up nice and quickly with these techniques. So I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you have, hit the like button. If you want to see more on the Heresy series, check out that playlist and give us a subscribe. And if you have any questions, pop them in the comments below and I'll get back to you as soon as I can. I'll see you next time.